There's no question that Tyler Perry is playing in the big leagues after taking the Atlanta theater scene by storm and banking box office gold with his Medea series. But Perry is not without controversy. If the rumors are true, Perry's ego grew so big that he even went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Oprah. Hey, it's not easy to get ahead in Hollywood without pulling a few shady moves, and here's why Perry is no exception. Boss Without Benefits After striking it big at the box office, Perry set his sights on TV with his hit sitcom House of Pain. But while on the verge of a lucrative syndication deal and spin-off Meet the Browns, Deadline dropped the news that Perry fired four writers for requesting union contracts. Writer Terry Brown Jackson told Deadline, "...we were good enough to create over a hundred episodes, but now when it comes to reaping the benefits of the show being syndicated and having other spin-offs from it, he decides to let us go unless we accept a horrible offer." Perry's solution? He told ABC News he now writes everything himself. But Perry's union troubles went beyond the writer's room. In 2015, actor union SAG-AFTRA and Actors' Equity banned its members from performing in Perry's stage play, Medea on the Run, because his production company wouldn't sign union contracts. Perry's main concern may be raking in the cash, but not everyone is thrilled with his methods. Stereotyping Following the success of House of Pain and Meet the Browns, NPR published an open letter to Perry from African-American journalist and cultural critic Jamila Lemieux, who was uncomfortable with Perry's use of stereotypes. Lemieux wrote, "...through Medea, the country has laughed at one of the most important members of the black community. Our mothers and grandmothers deserve much more than that. Mr. Perry, you have told the Hollywood old guard to kiss your backside, and I appreciate that, brother." But many black folks have expressed some of the very same attitudes about your work that white critics have. One of those folks is acclaimed film director Spike Lee, who famously took Perry to task for his stereotypical characters. A lot of stuff that's on today is buffoonery. Perry wasn't happy. Sensitive Issues in an interview with 60 Minutes, Perry fired back at Spike Lee's claims that his shows are setting black people back to the days of Amos and Andy. Perry said, I can slap Madea in something and talk about God, love, faith, forgiveness, family. It's attitudes like that that make Hollywood think that these people do not exist." But The Root editor Demetria Lucas wasn't having it. She wrote, "...does Perry live in the same insulated bubble as R. Kelly, the one that keeps him so isolated from reality that he genuinely has no clue why his critics don't like his work?" Controversial plot point In 2014, Perry was called out by The Huffington Post for the controversial ending to Tyler Perry's Temptation. In the movie, an unfaithful wife contracts HIV after cheating on her husband, while the husband rebounds with a beautiful new wife and family. HuffPost writer Mike Ryan said, "...either Perry believes that if you cheat on your partner, you deserve a terrible disease, or he believes that the people he hopes will pay money to see Tyler Perry's temptation believe that if you cheat on your spouse, you deserve a terrible disease. I can't decide which is worse." BuzzFeed's Louis Peitzman noted that at least three characters in Temptation have HIV, writing, "...in the context of Temptation, HIV is very much a sinner's disease, something that happens because a person did something morally wrong." Blackballer After winning an Academy Award in 2010 for Best Supporting Actress in the movie Precious, Monique's film career came to a screeching halt. According to The Hollywood Reporter, she was told by Precious director Lee Daniels that she had been, quote, "...blackballed for refusing to play along and campaign for her Oscar." Daniels said, "...Monique is a creative force to be reckoned with. Her demands through Precious were not always in line with the campaign. The consensus among the creative teams and powers thus far were to go another way with these roles." Those creative teams reportedly referred to Perry and to Oprah, who were both producers on Precious and worked closely with Daniels. In May 2017, Monique put Oprah, Perry, and Daniels on blast during a comedy set at the Apollo. No, I was not blackballed. I was whiteballed. <laughs> By some black who had no balls. Perry vs. Oprah in 2012, Perry left TBS for OWN, where he created three series for Oprah's network. At the time, it seemed like a perfect fit. 
However, according to the Daily Mail, their relationship allegedly went south in 2016 over Perry's supposed inability to accept criticism. The situation reportedly grew heated when Oprah suggested Perry bring on writers after a focus group felt his scripts could be improved significantly. A source revealed Perry's reply, saying, He told her, Aren't the shows delivering ratings for the network? Well, then let me do what I do and you can keep your focus group research to yourself. But Perry didn't leave TBS for own because his shows were so successful. He left because the ratings were tanking thanks to his resistance to feedback. In essence, Oprah bailed him out, but he was reportedly making the same mistakes all over again. While Perry and Oprah's best friend Gail King both denied reports of a feud, he went on to ink a deal with Viacom in 2017. So it sure seems like something went down with own. The Prosperity Theology when Perry donated $1 million to T.D. Jake's ministry in 2013, one of Perry's critics was social and religious issues writer Candace Benbow, who is both a fan of Perry's work and Jake's ministry. Benbow railed against the prosperity theology where poor and vulnerable parishioners are encouraged to give money with promises of increased returns. She wrote, The economic commodification of the gospel has been peddled on black people in a way that no other culture has experienced. Here, a man born into poverty who rose to riches on messages of hope and faith donates $1 million to a man who was born into poverty and rose to riches on messages of hope and faith. I can certainly understand folks' frustrations. Headlines heated back up in 2017 when Perry promised to donate $1 million to Hurricane Harvey relief efforts, including $250,000 specifically earmarked for televangelist Joel Osteen's church, which had allegedly shut its doors to residents seeking shelter after the storm. The public had plenty to say on social media about it. One Twitter user called it a spit in the face of Harvey survivors. Celebs are so out of touch. Thanks for watching! Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too!